Hello everyone, it's Veronica and welcome back to my channel. Let me put on my glasses first because I took it off so that the thumbnail wouldn't have glare, but I need a I need a seat. So today's video, by the way, is going to be a I don't know, like an experience, experiment, if you will. I am going to tackle Colleen Hoover. Here I have six total books. Now I should mention, I have read Colleen Hoover in the past. Not a lot. I've read Hopeless and L Lost. Why? I said this title in my head like a few minutes ago and now I've already lost it. Hopeless and Losing Hope. There you go. <laughs> and the only reason I remember that is because I remembered a band and guitar related things. And so when I searched it, the synopsis up, I was like, yeah, this is, those two books are the one I read. And I will not be rereading those because I feel like I would simply not enjoy them. Unlike when I read it, I think I read it in middle school or something like that. But now if I read it, I feel like I would just probably would not have a good opinion on it. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I would have to reread it. See, right? I just don't want to reread it, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I probably could have said that in such an easier way. Anyway, let's go through the pile of the six books that I have. The first book is All Your Perfects. This one, I honestly don't know. I think that they're in, like, they got married or they're about to get married or something and they're just kind of in the, like, slump of the marriage, I guess. Anytime I, s I talk about books that I haven't read, I most likely don't know the synopsis, and that's like my problem. Um, so basically, their perfect love is threatened by their imperfect marriage. So we have a then and a now, and I guess we're going back and forth between the time of when they first met and then fast forward to them in a marriage, struggling marriage, and I guess they're trying to make it work. This is the first book. I love the covers, by the way. I think they're really pretty. Um, the next book is Heartbones. This one is a summer fling. Wait. So they're neighbors and they can only really spend time together in the summer. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yet again, dope cover. Hella cool cover. The skulls, sorry, really add awesomeness to it, I guess. I just, I love skulls and flowers for some reason. Basically, it says their bond is too intense to ignore, but with only the summer separating them from the start of their new lives on opposite ends of the country, Bea and Samson decide to stay in the shallow end of a summer fling. What they don't realize is that a rip current is coming and it's about to drag both their hearts out to sea. Her, her synopsis, I feel like I read somewhere is or heard it somewhere, are just so vague that they don't tell anything, which I like in a book. Um, yet again, I really don't know what any of these books are, so please don't judge me if I get something wrong. I will read it and I will find out. The next one is probably the most popular, or at least one of the most popular. It is November 9th, and I think I pretty much know this one. They basically meet every day on November 9th. He's an author, I believe. Uh, an aspiring novelist and basically he wants to write the- okay, I really don't know. They continue to meet on the same day every year that I knew until one day Fallon becomes unsure if Ben has been telling her the truth or fabricating a perfect reality for the sake of the ultimate plot twist. Can Ben- Ben's relationship with Fallon and simultaneously his novel be considered a love story if it ends in heartbreak? good question. I think this one I'm most excited for just because I've heard the most about it. That being said, I've heard great things about everything, so I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, meh. The next book I wanted to, I picked up is Verity. I don't know what I've heard about this book, but it's um, weird is what I've heard everybody, or I guess, I don't know if weird is the word to say, but unusual, I guess. Um, basically, our main character is a ghostwriter, I believe. She's a struggling writer, and Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford, has hired Lowen, our main character, to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. So Lowen starts to go through just the manuscripts and everything. She uncovers um, an unfinished autobiography of Verity's that uh, she never intended anyone to find. I don't know. This is very interesting. I can't go more into detail because I don't know how to describe it, 
but basically she discovers this manuscript of her of Verity's life and now she I guess I think she writes that manuscript I don't know do not quote me do not judge me for not knowing that's Verity I mean I've heard great things I've heard just great things about uh, Colleen Hoover next is Ugly Love this is by far one of the most popular probably the popular book um, by Colleen Hoover basically Miles does not want love and she doesn't have time for love so that leaves just sex and they're in like the perfect no strings just so long as Tate can stick to the tool rules Miles has for her never ask about the past don't expect a future they think they can handle it but everything is different when real emotions start to change the equation so that's interesting I've heard really good things about this book like I said every book is really emotional so I'm very interested where I'll start first I don't know next I have most famous it ends with us this is about lily and ryle basically lily moves to boston and she meets ryle but then her past love reappears everything lily has built with ryle is threatened so i guess this is kind of like a love triangle i don't know but i do know that her newest book it starts with us i believe is about her and atlas in the past do not quote me on it, okay? I don't know. These are the four books that I will- four? Six books. Sorry, I apparently do not know math. Those are the six books that I will be reading throughout the whole of October. Um, that is it. I don't think I'm gonna make this into a reading vlog just because I feel like that would take too long. This video would be way too long. Let's talk about probably, I guess, my ratings. I don't think I'll be giving all of them five stars. I don't know. I feel like the highest at the moment, all of these books are very much four stars. Um, anyway, yeah. So first off, I feel like All Your Perfects I feel like I would give it a 4 or maybe a 4.5. Next we have Heart Bones, which I've forgotten what it's about again. Oh yeah, um, nope, forgot, hold on. Okay, yeah. I feel like Heart Bones is probably a 4, maybe a 3.5. This should be interesting. I mean, all of them are ranging around 4 to be honest. Like I would probably, at the moment, they would most likely be 4 stars, but this is more what I think would be like my most accurate rating. Next, November 9th, I feel like five stars. This just sounds so good and this sounds like something I would enjoy. Next, Verity, I'm most nervous. I honestly think I would give this one a three. Ugly Love, this is hard. I feel like 4.5. And then last, I uh, hope there's no cheating in this because that would drop it real low. But I would say 4.5 for this. I'm not a fan of love triangles. That is it for this portion of the video. I'm excited to see what I rated these guys. I will like update you guys every time I finish the book and give you a more accurate rating. I do hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's see what I think about all of these books. I'm scared. I mean, I've been really scared for the past like year or two of reading Colleen Hoover because she's just mega uber popular and I'm afraid. So I'll see you guys all for my first update. I don't know which book I'm starting first. I will see you guys for that first book review. See you guys. Hi everyone. It is has been a while. <laughs> I think it's been about like a week or maybe even two weeks since I last updated you guys and I haven't really gotten far with my Colleen Hoover experiment. Unfortunately, I'm very much still reading Verity. <laughs> That book is taking me a really long time and I just haven't gotten to it. So I stopped and instead I do actually have an update for you guys. And um, it is for November 9th and November 9th, sorry. What did I give this? I gave this four stars. I actually enjoyed it. Like I feel like it was just kind of like, it was interesting. You know, I don't know how to say this. It was interesting because the concept, it is interesting. The concept of, concept of only meeting on November 9 was really interesting. Seeing how each year they're older, they're different as well, you know, they're, they've just gone through so many things is just interesting. I, 
I know I say interesting, like, I, I know I said that, like, so many times already. I must say, it definitely picked up a lot towards uh, the end, and it just got more spicy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I must say, uh, their earlier years were a little slow, but finally, when we actually get to, like, the nitty-gritty third part area, you know, the third act, it was very interesting. You're not expecting things to go this way, and I certainly wasn't. This is pretty good, four stars. I have Ugly Love on Kindle as well, uh, which I could also read. So I will see you guys all next time for hopefully Verity, or I guess whatever I read or finish next. I will see you guys then. So, I finished Verity, and, um, whoo! First off, I don't know what to rate this. I can't tell if I want to rate it a 3, 3.5, or 4 star, because this book is truly psychotic, and Colleen Hoover definitely does a, does a really good job. I hate it. I hate it because it was so creepy. Okay, it wasn't scary at all, but it was just, just like crazy because it's just, you can see how it's slowly growing more suspicious of these characters and you're just like, what on earth? Definitely 100% Colleen Hoover does it super well. She writes these characters being insane and creepy and crazy so well and I think that's where it like is interesting. Actually I think I'm gonna give it a 3.5 because the beginning was really really slow and I just felt that I couldn't really get into it and I was very very close to DNFing it and I think that's why it took me so long to actually pick this book up and that's why I started reading it as an ebook. I don't know how to express my feelings about this book. I really don't. It's it's crazy and I think that's why I liked it because once we get through that like the climax you're just like what on earth? Anyways I'll see you guys all next time. See you guys. Good morning. Hi. Hello. Hi. It is it's uh, 8.50. I know that because I checked the time two minutes ago. And uh, I want to update you guys because before I went to shower, I actually finished Ugly Love. And um, I'm giving this three stars. Okay, I'm giving this three stars because first off, I saw a review that kind of put me off. And I was like, I kind of want to DNF this now. But I pulled through. I finished the whole book instead. You know, because I felt like, you know, even though I read a review, I should still give it a chance. Um, so I did. I gave it a chance and I'm giving it three stars. I originally thought, oh well, I, because of that review, I think I might give it one or two stars, but instead I'm giving it three stars, which is pretty good. That is an average rating for me. Didn't hate it, didn't love it either. So perfectly smack down in the middle and I'm okay with that. Let's talk. Let's discuss. I didn't like Miles as much as I wanted to, unfortunately. I just felt that he was a little too... I don't know how to feel. To be honest, I didn't... Okay, let's not talk about... Let's not talk about the characters. I didn't like the inverse style that Colleen Hoover went with Miles' past point of views. I just don't understand why she did it. I think it was useless. Um, I just, I don't think it really added much to the story. I mean, they're short sentences. Maybe that's why she did it. You know, they're so short that she's like, all right, let's split it up, you know. But I just, I think that, I just didn't like that. I didn't like the inverse style that she went with. Just the beginning, I felt was just so, the beginning, at least before we get to the climax, I didn't like it as much. I didn't, First off, didn't enjoy Miles' past point of views, and I felt that I was just bored, honestly, with Tate and Miles. You know, basically every other chapter, every, every chapter pretty much was just them having sex. And I was like, okay, I'm tired of this. Please, I beg you, move on. <laughs> I genuinely was like, okay, please stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Thank you. You know, I I don't care if I read about sex. It's just, 
the amount of times, like, I would rather have sex scenes be exciting. The scenes were just so bland. And I'm sorry, they were bland. But that's not why I'm giving it three stars. That That's not part of it. I just was not feeling it in the beginning and I was close to DNFing this. I think there's a clear overall theme with Colleen Hoover. They're so slow in the beginning at where I'm like, yeah, I think I want to say bye to this and then I end up sticking through it and then I end up giving it a pretty good reading. It was a happy ending, but it wasn't- the storyline wasn't happy. Like, I get it. It's ugly love. It's called that for a reason because it's literally ugly love and that's fine. You know, Miles's past was ugly. It was- a, it was an ugly love, right? Literally. Yeah, I was okay with it. I think the one thing I must say is that chapter with the character who shows up who is part of Miles' past, that chapter made me feel things. I didn't cry. This this book didn't really make me sad. Am I crazy for saying that? The fact that it didn't make me cry? Miles did not grovel enough for Tate, you know? He was just like, you know, hey, I'm back. I'm sorry. I figured things out. I've come to terms with it. Or what is that word called? I got closure and everything and she was like yeah welcome back you know i wanted more like no fight for this you little b <laughs> i just wanted more fight in miles for tate and his relationship i was just like bro fight what are you doing fight for this relationship um because he finally figured out like yes i can finally move on finally have a relationship and the resolution of why his past and why he's so messed up is just like that happened so fast i was like whoa slow down i just wanted more groveling that's not part of why i'm giving it three stars it, it kind of is um but it's not like the main reason why it's the reason why is that part one's and part two act one act two was just too slow for me I wanted more of a pickup also some of the chapters with miles has passed him could have been gone. I There was just some parts where I was like, I don't care. I, I really don't care about this much of your past, Miles. I feel like setting up as to why it's so messed up, that was great. It was great. But there's just some filler chapters with his past that was like, mm -mm, no thank you. So yeah, that is my update for you guys. Hopefully I'll finish Heartbones next hopefully anyways i will see you guys uh in the next clip welcome back it is evening time it is officially 9 57 aka 10. i want to give you guys an update because i have finished heart bones and i gave it four stars i actually really enjoyed this i gave it four stars i enjoyed it i don't know what it was about this book i feel like because every single time we encounter Samson, he is a complete mystery. We don't really know anything about him and I think that's what I like about it. Like from the start, he's already a mystery and it kind of continues to build up and up and up until finally we get to that like point where it's like, oh, okay, wow. Then it's like, wow, you're really, I don't know, I really enjoyed that. Um, Like I feel like just the fact that with like ugly love. There was just so much space in the, the beginning of the book. From the- from act one to act two of ugly love, there was just so much space and um, not enough content. Um, at least too much filler is what I'm trying to go. That space was filler. That I didn't really like it and I think that's one of the reasons why I gave that three star, but we're not talking about that, we're talking about this. I enjoyed it. I think also the fact that it was by the ocean and I love the ocean. And I think just the small details of like poetry included as well. And I don't know what it was about it. And the fact that, you know, they were just polar op opposites, but yet they were actually really, really similar to each other. And that's what's really interesting. Also, can we just talk about Grimm as her last name? She was interesting. I don't know. I don't know how to explain her character because it's hard to describe her. She was just really well developed, I feel, and she was just really, really interesting. I really liked it. And Sarah, her stepsister, I really liked her as a side character. I thought she was a lot of fun and I liked the epilogue. They were just really good. They worked really well together. You know, they're opposites yet so basically the same person, you know? And I think that's what I really liked about Heartbones. I feel like this was subtly written 
yet well written and I really enjoyed it. I just, I feel like I'm repeating myself at this moment, so I'm really sorry. So I'm going to just end this review here by saying four stars. Really, really enjoyed it. Hello, everybody. I actually um, did a recording before this, but I'm going to scrap that. I went through too long of a rant and it was just so angry, um, but I still very much agree with what I said. Basically, I finished All Your Perfects by our very dear... Colleen Hoover and um I'm I I'm giving I gave I gave this two stars I finished it this morning but I did have to go to campus so I went to campus and everything it's 5 30 by the way 5 35 technically but I gave this two stars first off I uh, didn't really like this book this is not my favorite out of the five that I've read and I would say it is lower than ugly love because Ding ding, it had cheating in it. Twice. Two cheating. Two cheats. The first one, technically, I don't really care about because it's not important. She got cheated on by her fiance, and that is actually how Quinn and Graham meet because their partners cheat with each other. Um, so Graham's girlfriend or fiance, whatever, cheats with Quinn's fiance. So, you know, that's how they meet. And so that one, you know, it's secondary. We only get that one chapter of it. It's not, it's like the beginning, you know, like we don't really see anything or hear anything or whatever. We only know. So that's like, that's not something that I really care about. The second time, Graham cheats on her. Like, you would think that you could see how she is scarred from that cheating moment with her ex-fiance, but no. He, like, doesn't learn. He, d he didn't learn. And, you know, what's sad is the fact that they were married for, like, five, four, five years, six years, and he ends up cheating on her. The one thing that lacked was the fact that Graham actually was really bad. Like, I didn't like him as a hero. I hated him. I loved him in the beginning, especially when we see them in the past to the, f to, you know, the act one. I liked him in the past when they were getting to know each other and everything but then once we I feel like dive into the marriage part and the present day of their relationship he just continues to go downhill and I didn't end up liking him unfortunately cheating by the way is basically an automatic one star for me if you have cheating I'm gonna hate your book so bad I just there I can deal with the pregnancy trope but I cannot ever deal with cheating. Cheating is by far the worst thing to ever exist in fiction. Don't even get me started on real life, okay? We're talking about fiction here. Don't comment, by the way. I don't want to deal with any of this, okay? I get marriages have their downs, but we never truly see their ups. We don't see their ups. And I think also another thing is the fact that, you know, there wasn't any communication. You know, everybody's like marriage you must communicate and everything, but they bottled the heck out of their self, themselves, okay? They, Graham ended up writing letters and what did, whatever Quinn's name, what did, <laughs> Quinn's name, what did Quinn do? She bottled it. They both bottled their emotions. They never talked and I think that's, honestly, that's literally why she became depressed because they didn't talk about the fact that they didn't talk about that she was infertile at all. You know, they just dealt with it silently and that's why she's got so much pain. She didn't talk about it. And I get, you know, it's scary to talk about, you know, it's like, Veronica, you don't understand. You never went through this. Don't comment that, okay? Just don't comment anything, okay? Just sit through this, watch it or skip this, okay? But I just, I, I don't know, like, Everybody's like communicate communicate and then you don't see two characters who are married to each other communicate one ends up cheating on His spouse. It's like geez. Okay divorce. I please I this is I have so many instances these days where I'm just like they were better off Divorcing or breaking up. I just they just I feel like they could have done so much better with each other without each other and I get like soulmates Veronica. Yeah, Fine. They're soulmates. Fine. Whatever. Stay together. But it's just... 
I did not like it. I didn't feel comfortable at all, and by the time I finished this, I was just like, ugh, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen Hoover. I realize now that I really don't enjoy most of your books. This whole week has just been Colleen Hoover books straight, and um, I'm done. I They suffer too much, and I don't enjoy suffering. I get it, marriages suffer sometimes. I get it. But they also have happier moments. But this, zero. All suffer. And if you don't agree with any of this and what I'm saying, I get it. It's This is all very my opinion. This is all my opinion for these books um, and for All Your Perfect. So if you have a different opinion, yeah, of course you're gonna have a different opinion. You know, everybody has their own thoughts and process with books. So if you don't agree, I'm okay with that. But if you do, I'm also okay with that. Whatever you choose. Um, you know, you could have loved this, you could have cried, it's okay. It's totally okay. I'm gonna continue reading It Ends With Us, so I'll see you guys soon, and I'll update you guys later. Hi everybody! Hold on, let me get my stool ready. Yeah, I really do need a foot rest, okay? I'm that person, alright? Don't judge me, please. Hi, welcome back. I know, I'm probably a little too close for comfort. Let me back it up a little bit. Okay, first off, today was the day... I left my hair tie home and I've been like this all day with my hair just a complete disaster. This was the last and final book and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys what I rated this. I rated this 3.5 stars. I actually really enjoyed this. This is definitely one of the tops for this experiment and obviously All Your Perfect and Ugly Love is just the, the end, the below. What? <laughs> um, I will kind of rank this into what my favorites are. I don't have one of those ranking scale things, but I'll just rate it 1 to 6. So, yeah. Yeah, let's have fun with that, you know? Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I also... <laughs> funny, I... Okay, I should say I finished this last night, and then I started It Starts With Us last night. And I finished It Starts With Us this morning. And I give that four stars. I ended up enjoying this duology. I gave this 3.5 stars because I just felt the uncomfor uncomfortableness, the discomfort. Oh my god, am I an English major or not? Jeez, I'm so bad at this. I gave this 3.5 because I could feel the discomfort of when... By the way, there are spoilers, okay? I'm sorry. Um, I could just feel the just the discomfort in the fact that when Ryle abused Lily, it was just like, oh, oh my god, I hate that so much. And I think the one thing that Colleen Hoover does well is the, she's, to just, sorry, I truly don't know how to speak English. Just witness my cat attack my other cat. Um, speaking of attacks, could feel the hurt and pain that Lily went through when Ral abused her. And it's it, it's heartbreaking because I truly wanted to love Ryle. And at first I thought this was gonna be like one of those love triangles where it's like, oh, I love this guy, but then my past came back and now I'm kind of falling for him. That's what I thought what this, this book was gonna be about. And I didn't even think about like, what happened and it's heartbreaking because she's like i don't want to turn out like my mom because she her mother ended up staying in the marriage um for her specifically for lily i think i don't remember and she was abused and so lily went through her whole life watching her father abuse her mother by the end we see how you know she has so many people around her and i loved that she had just the people around her to tell her it's okay to leave your marriage with Ryle because she actually marries Ryle in a spur of the Las Vegas moment wedding kind of moment and um you know at first it's perfect it, it was amazing and I was seriously rooting for Ryle and Lily but then by the end we're like okay she deserves this divorce she needs it and it Starts With Us really showed Raoul's true color. At first I was like, Atlas, what are you doing? You fool, get away. But also I was kind of loving Atlas um, during this book. Like Atlas was neutral in It Ends With Us, 
but I really started to truly love Atlas in book two and I loved it. Um, you could tell that, you know, he just had this like sense of like, I want to be with her and I will always love her. The soulmate situation, I was like, yeah, that kind of gets me in the feels. I, I mean, I hate that every single Colleen Hoover character just goes through so much pain and trauma and I like by the way I'm not saying that I know what Lily is going through I have been in her shoes before none of that I have not been married or anything so it's not like I can say yeah I I know what she was feeling because I don't I just could feel her discomfort while reading it and I think that Colleen Hoover does a really good job with that so I think it's really well written but I think I'm giving it 3.5 stars because of just the sections where we have the letters or just this like diary entries so to speak. It's her when she was younger when she met meets Atlas and um, she hasn't written that written in it since she was 16 but she has these journals because she she actually reads them throughout the book like she's reminiscing. I didn't care for Atlas through these point of views like I didn't care about the past and to be honest I actually skipped majority of her dear Ellen moments I skipped all of them actually only there was only a few of them where I feel like I would skim them and like sometimes I would read them but I wouldn't finish them I just thought they were kind of useless and I get they're personal and there's a plot point kind of why it's so relevant but I genuinely could not care more about the Dear Ellen, more or less. I just couldn't care about it. I genuinely, I was like, I don't need to read this. So I skipped those. But truthfully, there's something holding me back from a, from a four. The change from just Ryle in the beginning of the book to the, the ending, I was just like, oh my god. There are men who truly do this. Uh, probably not just men, probably women as well, you know, whatever. And it's just heartbreaking because I was like, oh my, I wasn't expecting it. I like, again, I really went into this thinking Ryle, Ryle 100%. And then, because I loved him in the beginning. And I think that's what Colleen Hoover does well. It's that you're meant to love Ryle. And then when you get to the abuse, you're just like, well, F you, Ryle, jeez. Um, but I can't say F you because I feel like he really does care for... Emmy Emerson. By the way, they have a child. Surprise! <laughs> the spoilers! Hello! Jeez, uh... Did I... Okay, yeah. Okay, maybe I should not be on this document. <laughs> it was heartbreaking when she divorced him. She was like, I want a divorce, like, minute after she gave birth to Emerson. I was like, woo hoo hoo But I think it was the right thing to do. Like, I think that she did the right decision. Like I said, can't say like, I can't say anything about it because obviously I've never been married or anything. And I, now I'm combining It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us. I feel like she talks about the way that she, the paranoia that Lily goes through with like worrying about like, what if, what if Ryle hurts my daughter? You know, it's like that, just like fear for her child. And I feel like it's just, you can tell how, I, I don't know, just it's done well. It's done well. Every single time we see Ryle, he's now portrayed as the man that hurt and abused, assaulted Lily. And so we're going through reading this and it's just like, you can tell how immensely different he is from the man from the very beginning of It Ends With Us. I was like, wow, that character development or downgrade, if you will, it was insane. Let's rank them. Let's let's rank them. First off, we're gonna go to, f we're gonna go to worst to last. <laughs> Y'all know what I really hated and that was, oh, not bending your book. All Your Perfect is book six. I hated it, two stars. Cheating is a no for me. By the way, this section has no spoilers. I'm gonna make sure I don't spoil it. Um, cheating, don't, I hate it. I just, mm. it really started out well. And unfortunately, this is six. Y'all know what book five is. And that is, oh, I'll rank them. And I'll also tell you what I originally predicted this to be. So, oof, 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 oof. I'm gonna have to find it. All your perfects, I predicted 4.5. And it became a two star. 
fascinating. Next, I have Ugly Love, which is book five. Or, what do you call it? The fifth... The fifth best book. The second worst. I don't know. I gave this... What did I give? Three or 3.5? I gave this... Three... Three. <laughs> My Goodreads was floating. For Ugly Love, I ended up giving it a prediction of a 4.5, which I mean, going down to a 3 isn't really too bad. Obviously, I'm not going to say my thoughts on it because you guys can go back to the clip where I talk about it. The fourth would, I would say, be Verity. Verity, I gave 3.5. I thought it was okay. A little too psychotic for me, to be honest. I ended up giving this a rating of a 3.5, and my prediction was a 3. Pretty good, not too far off. I say I'm impressed. I would say November 9 would be book three. I gave this four stars. My prediction was five stars. So yeah, not too far off, but this would be my middle third favorite. And then it would be Heartbones, which I forgot. I think it was four stars and I predicted four stars. Still pretty good. And my favorite, believe it or not, was actually It Ends With Us. Believe it or not, I actually enjoyed this a lot. You know, even though it talks about and you can see the experience of the sexual assault and abuse that Lily goes through, I feel like co accompanying that with It Starts With Us, it actually, I enjoyed it a lot. This was definitely my favorite. I mean, I gave it four stars. Well, I gave this one 3.5 and I gave the series, the book four, book, <laughs> book two, It Starts With Us four stars. But I would say, all in all, just the duology is definitely a four-star range. So I did enjoy this the most. And I feel like, you know, even though assault and abuse is such a heavy topic, I feel like the other stuff was a lot of fun. And by the way, I'm I'm also talking about It Starts With Us. Just the duology in general, I feel like, goes really well. And I think that's why I, I liked it a lot. And I feel like if It Starts With Us hadn't come out yet, and I only read this alone... I probably would have given this, would have, this would have been my second favorite or maybe third. I definitely enjoyed, like, this is why the rating is like this, just because there are more that I enjoyed. And so this is what I enjoyed, you know? One to six, all your perfects. So it ends with us slash it starts with us. The duology, then we have Heartbones, November 9, Verity. Then we have Ugly Love, and then lastly, All Your Perfects. Thank you guys so much for coming to this Colleen Hoover experiment. Did I do well? I think I did. I'm really proud of myself. I would say I did really well. And I'm really proud of myself and the fact that I managed to cram this whole, all six books in this week. I think that's pretty funny for me because I... I just don't know why. I don't know why I did that. I could have spaced it out so well. I started this video like two weeks ago to be honest and I still managed to do it last minute. Isn't that so perfect? Hilarious. I'm so dumb and I think it's hilarious. I would say really happy with where I left off. Will I be reading more Colleen Hoover books? Uh, I do not know but I know the only book I will be reading somewhat soon probably this week is gonna be Regretting You because I already own that on Kindle and if I don't read it now I will never read it. So I will be reading that soon. I don't know. I just did not. Mm -mm. I just too much pain, too much trauma these characters go through and I don't like that. I already mentioned it like 10 times in this video so I'm done saying it. In general, I would say success to this Colleen Hoover reading experiment. Do you guys want me to try another author? Comment that down below. I would love to try perhaps another author. Thank you guys so much for coming to this video. Did you guys enjoy it? Give it a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button down below and like I said do comment if you guys want to see another author. I will see you guys all next Saturday for a new video and thank you guys so much for coming and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!